Hi there. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Anjali and that is my dog Sadie. And together we are roaming the UK in our 1992 camper van, Jezebel. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the channel. Uh, I am in the Netherlands. Yay, currently in Zandam. Uh, this is where Pat lives, so just on the river Zan there, um, where I did some wild swimming the other night. Uh, today I'm heading off into Amsterdam city centre. I'm going to go look at some weird, weird museums. There's a cat museum I want to see, and a museum on a houseboat, and some other things on a list I've got. So yeah, we're going to head into the city. Uh, first time using the transport on my own, so hopefully I can work out how to buy myself a ticket and get myself into the city centre. Fingers crossed. So behind me here is the Zan, uh, sort of the harbour area that moves onto the little island. Uh, that Pat lives on and we went wild swimming in here and it was lovely it was really nice to, have to, to get to go wild swimming somewhere we didn't have to check an app beforehand to make sure there wasn't raw sewage floating around in it as happens in the UK um, yes we went for a swim in this area just behind me and there's a little bridge uh, that we swam underneath and uh, it was very pleasant uh, very nice. It's been very hot here the last couple of days, so nice in the evening to cool off in the river and the harbour area. I made it. <laughs> Got on the right train and everything. It's only 10 minutes from Sandam into the city centre, so that's awesome. And now I'm going to take a walk to the Houseboat Museum, uh, which is five euros. And uh, yeah, hopefully get to have a little wander and a look inside uh, a houseboat living on a canal in Amsterdam. First stop today is the House Boat Museum, which as you can see is behind me and open. I found it, wonderful. So this is actually someone's house and for a few hours on various days of the week, they let you come in and have a look and ask questions and sort of have a tour of their home, which I think is a nice little extra way to make a bit of money when you uh, live on the canals. So yeah, we're gonna head in and have a look at this uh, wonderful houseboat. The museum is located in the Hendrika Maria, a former cargo ship built in 1914. The cargo hold is now a cosy living space featuring all the conveniences and a surprising amount of space and comfort. As you embark the boat at the stern and down the five steps, the street noises fade away and are replaced with the nautical smells and colours and sometimes the light movements of the swell. Measuring 23 by 4.5 metres, it's a good living space of 80 metres squared. This houseboat is equal to the size of the average Amsterdam apartment. In its early days, the boat was used as a freighter and the skipper would live in the stern with his family. In 2008, it was restored to its former glory and gives a good insight into the living conditions on board the ship as they were. At the bow, you can clearly see how the steel plates used to construct the boat are connected to the rivets. These days, living on a boat as a houseboat, just like living in a van, can be just as comfortable as living in a house. In most cases, houseboats have connections for water, gas, electricity, sewage, telephone and the internet. Good insulation can keep heating costs in check and also make comfortable living during the winter months. So, just had a lovely tour of the Houseboat Museum. Uh, sorry, uh, sort of informal tour. It's only four euros if you get the voucher that's on their website. Um, and yeah, you can just wander around at your leisure. They give you um, 20 different languages they've got available of like info sheets and sort of a walking tour information that you might need when you're in each room. 
And yeah, very supportive and very nice little way to break up the day, so highly recommend hanging out at the Houseboat Museum for a little bit if you uh, happen to be walking around Amsterdam. I'm now making my way to the Tulip Museum because, of course, another thing about the Netherlands is tulips. So yeah, again, another small, cheap museum uh, that sort of breaks up your day. So I'm off there and it's really easy from the house phone museum. It's literally just you follow the canal um, back in a straight line for 10 minutes and then you're there. So let's go. So something I learned at the museum is that the tulip it's not actually native to Holland, uh, which I assumed it was because you always associate tulips with Holland. Uh, its most uh, important habitat is actually the northern foothills of the Himalayan mountains. The first tulip fanatics were the sultans of the Ottoman Empire and they collected and displayed large quantities of tulips and they think that's actually um, where the name uh, originated from for tulips it came from the uh, word turban. So tulips actually reached Holland around 1600, uh, where Dutch trade flourished and Holland was one of the richest countries in Europe. People tried to outdo each other in collecting the most unusual forms and no wealthy merchant's home would be complete without a collection of tulips and tulip related art. In the winter of 1637, frenzied trade elevated the price of tulip bulbs to dizzying heights. After the collapse of the market, tulip production switched from mainly city dwellers to country farmers. And in the early 20th century, modern transport methods made it possible to export tulip bulbs to all over the world. The Dutch were able to take advantage of the perfect combination of both climate and land and turn the tulip into a worldwide icon. Okay, so done the tulip museum. Uh, again, five euros, uh, very cheap, very interesting uh, museum. That I learned a lot about tulips, things I didn't know about tulips. Uh, so yeah, now I'm going to walk to the cat and cabinet, which is a cat cabinet curiosity museum where everything is about cats. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that sounds weird. Let's go and do that. Uh, so this one is about a 20 minute walk from this museum. So not too bad a walk up into the city um, a bit further. But yeah, look forward to a weird museum about cats. I'm not really a cat person, but I thought it sounded kind of fun. So off we go. I know that cities aren't everyone's cup of tea, they're loud and busy, but uh, let me tell you, if you come to a city, make sure you do the walk-in. Don't just use the public transport, you'll find lots of cool things you wouldn't have seen if you were on a tra tram or a bus or something. Um, and I just found a really nice place to have lunch, just because I walked down a little road and it was there, it was a little sandwich shop. And uh, yeah, the food was delicious. It was four euros for a massive chicken and avocado sandwich. Um, and it was great, so yeah, highly recommend. So if you're in the city, don't be afraid to just walk around a bit and sort of enjoy what's going on. This little tour, it's just been a very small area of Amsterdam that I've done a couple of museums that I knew were sort of within walking distance of each other. But Amsterdam is full of museums. Um, not just the big ones like the Reich and the Van Gogh and places like that. They have lots of tiny little ones in people's houses and stuff. Uh, so I hope that if you ever visit Amsterdam, you go to some of those as well as the bigger ones uh, that are well known. But yeah, the sun keeps coming out and then leave, going away again today. It keeps stressing into rain. So hopefully it will stay nice until I can get back on the train uh, back to Sanzam. But yeah, I'm just coming round to the uh, uh, Gabit which is the Cat Museum, so let's go see what that's all about. The Cat and Cabinet is a small museum located in the old Patrician's House in Amsterdam, uh, in an area of town where today the banks and top attorneys have their offices. Uh, it is entirely devoted to cats, ceiling to floor, cats. 
It was founded in 1990 by William Meher, a wealthy Dutchman who in this way wanted to preserve the memory of his own cat, Tom. The collection at the Cat Cabinet offers a wide look at the role of cats in art and in culture throughout the centuries. Scattered about these two houses that have been combined together uh, are posters, sculptures, photographs, lithographs, playbills, paintings and drawings of cats. So many cats. The sculptures, paintings, posters and books about the felines are exhibited in a serious professional way which is uh, to me almost too serious and I think uh, it's probably designed this way to sort of provoke a smile from the visitor's face. There are a lot of cats here. <laughs> I don't I know that it's a cat museum so you can see lots of cats but like there's so many cats. So many cats in every room. It's so weird. Like, I mean, if you're going to go with a the theme, go hard with it, yeah? But I hadn't realised like how many old adverts and things used cats. Um, I wish that it gave you more of a sort of inside into why that was. It doesn't really have anything written down apart from to say this is, you know, a painting by so and so or a sculpture by so and so. I'd be interested to know what the thought process was behind always using cats. Does anyone know? I'm going to have to do some research outside of this because uh, it's intrigued me. Um, I like as well that there are cats floating around. I mean, I'm horribly allergic, so I can't go anywhere near them, but at least they let cats into their cat museum. So that's nice. I like this little garden area as well. The house itself could actually be a museum on its own. It was built for William Adrian Van Loon in 1667. It's one of two identical houses standing opposite each other. And a drawer decided which of the houses belonged to which of the brothers. And it was William who got the house in which the museum is today. So if you're weary of visiting the numerous uh, exhibits on art and history that Amsterdam has to offer, uh, Cat and Cabinet uh, will bring a nice change. The theme may seem like a joke, but the choice of the presented artworks is remarkable and the way they are presented is amusing. Uh, the Cat Cabinet quarters are unique and definitely a must for cat lovers. That was weird. <laughs> So that particular museum is 10 euros and you have to, it says on, on the website that you have to book online. However, the people in front of me had not and they perfectly were fine taking tickets. I guess if it's quiet, you can just buy tickets. Uh, during busy times, they obviously have a limit to how many people they can let in. So buy online. I bought mine online. It was very quick and I just showed them the PDF on my phone and that was fine. And I bought my ticket like five minutes before I got here. So. Yeah, 10 euros. I would have liked it to have been five, but then it's fine. Uh, it's a lot of cats. So if you love cats, this is a great place for you. If you're indifferent to cats, it was still very interesting. So give it a go. that you enjoyed today's uh, video, that's the word. <laughs> if so, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that lovely stuff. I've just made it back to Amsterdam Central train station now, so I'm gonna head back to Zandam. But it's been a lovely flying visit into Amsterdam. And uh, yeah, hopefully the next video will be just as cool and informative as this one. Have a lovely day, bye. So <laughs> took myself out for another little swim in the Zan this evening as the sun's going down. It's very nice. I found a new little spot to uh, crawl down into, which is much easier. Should be much easier getting out again than uh, the last time. But it's very shallow here. I could actually stand up in this bit quite easily. Um, yeah, gonna go for a swim.